I'm Rabbi Yosef Solomon, and this is Tikkun's Pesach message. One of the most fundamental measurements of authentic Jewish wisdom is relevance. That's because when wisdom ceases to be practical and pertinent to our daily lives, it ceases to be of any value. There is perhaps one time of the year in our Jewish calendar which would, if you look at it on a surface level, seem to contradict this foundation. That's Pesach. Here, we found a commandment in the Torah which says we need to view the Exodus as if it had happened today. And on Seder night, when we gather ourselves to read the Haggadah, we find a law that teaches that if every person is obligated to see himself as if he had left Egypt that night. Now, in a religion as as rational as ours, where truth is you know valued above all, this law either seems to be allegorical or impossible. Neither of which are authentic, are authentic Jewish wisdom. It just doesn't fit. Rather, it really must be what it says. We need to see ourselves as if we left on Pesach. So in order to solve this contradiction, this problem, we need to have a look at how Judaism or the Torah views time and specifically the calendar. In all other measurements of time, all calendars, and if I may say Gregorian or other, any event, be it a birthday, a death, an anniversary, anything that happened and its commemoration is merely a measurement of the Earth's orbit around the Sun 365 times. There's nothing really intrinsically relevant to that same date a year later to the actual event that happened. Look, it is the same date, but there's nothing really connected. It's similar to how you could have two men who live in different parts of the world with exactly the same name, but have nothing in common. The Torah, on the other hand, views time and the calendar in a completely different way. Our, mystic, our mystics, you know, our sages explain that on each festival, a rectification happened, a tikkun, a repair, if you will, in the universe, and a great light shone forth. Now, in the system of creation that God set up, there's a spiritual reality that every anniversary of that event, that same light shines forth again. And that rectification or the results of it are available to anyone who chooses to tap in. What this means in our words is that every year, every time in the calendar when that same event or that same festival happens, we have the ability to tap into the same spirituality, the same light that was once there. So in effect, our calendar is more like a spiral than a linear measurement of past to future. We move through pockets of time as would, say, a train through stations or you know, one way we can understand this is if we look at how we experience the seasons of the year. Every year we move from spring into summer, which becomes autumn and then winter, and then spring again. And as each year through our life, as we experience another spring, the, the, the reality of the season is there to be experienced. We have changed as we're going through though. I guess you could say this is similar to two men who have completely different names yet they grew up in the same house, like two brothers. They are in really intrinsically linked. So too the Jewish festivals. So all that's left for us now to do, to understand, is what was the light that shone forth? What was the tikkun? What was the rectification? Everybody knows and understands that it was an exodus from slavery into redemption. It was a process from darkness into light. Now, our sages teach us that there are two ways to, to, to look at anything in the world. You can look at it externally, physically per se, or you can look at it internally and spiritually. Sort of how I can view you and understand you from the way you dress or sit for that matter, or I can talk to you and I can get to know you. I can understand what your dreams are, what you love, what you like, what you hate. They will tell me on a deeper level who you really are. So we can look at Pesach externally and understand that the slavery and the redemption was physical or we can look at it more deeply and understand that there was a spiritual slavery and there was a spiritual redemption now the torah teaches that every man 
is a wondrous contraction of a body and a soul. A soul in a body. And the purpose of life is to elevate the physical and elevate that body to a higher experience, a higher consciousness. With this in mind, we can now redefine slavery and freedom. Slavery now becomes anything which hinders that soul's reaching of its potential, of acquiring its mission, of doing what it was put in this world to do. Anything that stops us, blocks us, keeps us back, constrains us, is called a slavery. Any defense mechanism, any escape that we have, any addiction, be it real like a, chem a chemical, or just watching too much TV, or eating too much dessert, that's an agent of slavery. Anywhere where we are not able to live life, talk to people, or be who we really can be, that's considered spiritual slavery. Freedom on the other hand, freedom is our ability to live life as we choose to, as we want to, and not how we feel like. Unhindered from any force, be it external or internal, from stopping us of who we can be and who we really are. So now we can see that this Pesach and every other Pesach will always have the ability to literally break through and break out of Egypt, meaning break out of what holds us back from being who we really can be. If you're interested in more of Tiklin's classes, please log on to our website www.tiklin.co.uk. Chag Sameach.